Everyone has heard of the nuclear bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but what not many people know is how Koreans were affected by these atrocities, and their stories along one of slavery, struggle, and neglect by both Japan, America, and South Korea. Now you might be wondering, why are there any Koreans in Hiroshima and Nagasaki during the bombings in the first place? Well, to explain the Korean situation in Japan, we have to look back at Korean history and how it became intertwined with Japanese history. Japan had begun heavily influencing Korea since the Meiji Restoration in 1868. Eight years later in 1876, Japan forced Korea to sign the Unequal Japan-Korea Treaty, ending Korea's protectorate status under China, forcing them to open up three Korean ports to Japanese trade, and Japanese ter citizens had extraterritorial rights in Korea. This treaty is a classic example of gunboat diplomacy, a very common form of imperialism in the 1800s. Since 1876, Korea became more and more intertwined and influenced by Japan, and this influence culminated in the complete annexation of Korea by Japan in 1910. Korea was reduced to a colony by Japan, with hundreds of thousands of Japanese settlers flooding the country to settle the land as farmlands were being redistributed to the new settlers and Korean peasants. Japan's rule over Korea was extremely exploitative as well, as they relied on Korean peasants to produce more rice for them during a shortage in 1918, and they used Koreans as slave labor, and the Japanese forced Korean women into sexual slavery for the military during World War II. However, Koreans did struggle against the Japanese rule and colonization during this period of occupation, with numerous rebel groups fighting the Japanese from 1910 to 1945. Besides direct settlement, Japan began other assimilation methods in Korea, such as replacing Korean names of Japanese ones and deporting Koreans to Japan to work as forced laborers during World War II. Due to a Japanese labor shortage, since Japan began conscripting more and more of their men to serve in their armed forces. Almost 5.5 million Koreans were conscripted by Japan to work during World War II. About 607,000 of these were taken to mainland Japan to labor for the Japanese. This is where Hiroshima and Nagasaki come in, as many Koreans were drafted to work at the military industrial facilities in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. When the atomic bombs were dropped on these cities, the Korean victims were in an even worse situation than the Japanese victims. As Koreans were colonial subjects in Japan, they had high rates of death and radiation exposure due to the lack of housing for them and medical discrimination they faced. Koreans were also crowded into downtown areas for work, which made them closer to blast sites. Koreans didn't have family in Japan either to take refuge with after the bombings, so many stayed in these irradiated cities and got more sick. And to top it off, Japanese hospitals even refused to treat Korean victims of the bombs. In total, 50,000 Koreans died in these atomic bombings, leaving 43,000 Korean survivors. The survivors of the atomic bombings were called Hibakusha. The Korean Hibakusha did not live well at all, with many leaving Japan to return to the Korean Peninsula. Even after they returned to their homeland, they still suffered the atrocious aftereffects of radiation poisoning. The Korean Atomic Bomb Casualty Association estimated that 60% of the survivors who returned to Korea died by diseases due to the radiation, or they died during the Korean War. The survivors were also challenged politically in South Korea to gain any sort of representation as the South Korean government ignored the survivors' community pleas for help. With many of the survivors being disabled from the debilitating effects of the atomic bombs, and many more were left destitute and poor as they were forced to leave behind whatever lives they had in Korea when the Japanese took them and used them as slave labor in Japan. Most victims could also not afford health care to treat their sicknesses as well. Japanese Koreans were in a similarly bad situation, as Japan offered no treatment for atomic bomb survivors until 1957 but they purposefully excluded any Korean victims. Unsurprisingly, the United States also refused to aid the victims at all and denied responsibility for any victims of their nuclear attacks and their nuclear testing. Most Korean victims went to South Korea, but 3,000 also went to North Korea, where they received free healthcare and treatment for their illnesses. Japan finally began giving medical aid to the Korean survivors in the 1980s, but Japan has never apologized for discriminatory medical treatment towards Korean victims. Soon after Japan, South Korea also began giving treatment to the Korean Hibakusha. 35 years after the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, there is finally a glimmer of hope for the remaining survivors, since many survivors died in that 35 year period. But, the joint South Korean Japanese treatment programs had its pitfalls and was quite ineffective. The program had South Korean survivors go to Japan for medical treatment for two to six months, but the program did not account for future visits, for the treatment of illnesses that returned, and for long term care. Once the patients returned to Korea, their care did not continue was not followed up upon. By 1986, this joint program for the survivors ended, with only 349 out of 9,000 plus registered survivors at the time being treated.
This was simply a grain of wheat in the haystack of survivors, and the treatment the survivors received was not long-term at all. The only Japanese hospital that remained treating Korean survivors for the long term was the Hiroshima C Committee. After decades of selflessly treating Korean survivors with no government funding and a small budget, finally in 2015, after nearly six decades later, the delayed monetary compensation and reimbursement for the remaining Korean survivors occurred from the Japanese government. The struggle for Korean atomic bomb survivors and their descendants is not over, however, as they continue to strive for recognition and denuclearization around the globe to prevent another atrocity like the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki.